of our union. This is a difficult task. Many have spent the last year anxious, angry, afraid. We all feel the fractured fault lines across our country. We hear the voices of Americans who are forgotten and feel forsaken. We see an economy that makes stocks soar, investor portfolios bulge, and corporate profits climb, but fails to give workers their fair share of the reward. A government that struggles to keep itself open. Russia, knee deep in our democracy. An all out war on environmental protection. A justice department rolling back civil rights by the day. Hatred and supremacy proudly marching in our streets. Bullets tearing through our classrooms, concerts, and congregations, targeting our safest sacred places. And this nagging, sinking feeling, no matter your political beliefs, that this is not right. This is not who we are. Folks, it would, it would be easy to dismiss this past year as chaos, partisanship as politics. But it's far, far bigger than that. This administration isn't just targeting the laws that protect us. They're targeting the very idea that we are all worthy of protection. For them, dignity isn't something you're born with but something you measure by your net worth, your celebrity, your headlines, your crowd size. Not to mention the gender of your spouse, the country of your birth, the color of your skin, the God of your prayers. Their record is a rebuke to our highest American ideal the belief that we are all worthy, that we are all equal, that we all count. In the eyes of our law and our leaders, our God and our government, that is the American promise. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today, that promise is being broken by an administration that callously appraises our worthiness and decides who makes the cut and who can be bargained away. They're turning American life into a zero-sum game where for one to win, another must lose, where we can guarantee America's safety if we slash our safety net where we can extend health care in Mississippi if we gut it in Massachusetts. We can cut taxes for corporations today if we raise them on families tomorrow. Where we can take care of sick kids if we sacrifice dreamers. We are bombarded with one false choice after another. Coal miners or single moms? Rural communities or inner cities? The coast or the heartland? As if the mechanic in Pittsburgh, a teacher in Tulsa, and a daycare worker in Birmingham are bitter rivals, rather than mutual casualties of a system forcefully rigged towards those at the top. As if the parent who lies awake terrified that their transgender son or daughter will be beaten and bullied at school is any more or less legitimate and a parent whose heart is shattered by a daughter in the grips of an opioid addiction. 
So here is the, dem is the answer the Democrats offer tonight. We choose both. We fight, we fight for both, because the greatest, strongest, richest nation in the world should not have to leave anyone behind. We choose, we choose a better deal for all who call our country home. We choose a living wage and a paid leave and affordable childcare your family needs to survive. We choose pensions that are solvent, trade packs that are fair, roads and bridges that won't rust away, a good education that you can afford. We choose a healthcare system that offers you mercy, whether you suffer from cancer or depression or addiction. We choose an economy strong enough to boast record stock prices and brave enough to admit that top CEOs making 300 times their average worker is not right. We choose Fall River. We choose the thousands of American communities whose roads aren't paved with power or privilege, but with an honest effort, with good faith, and the resolve to build something better for your kids. That, that is our story. It began the day our founding fathers and mothers set sail for a new world, fleeing oppression and intolerance. It continued with every word of our independence, the audacity to, dec to declare that all men are created equal, an imperfect promise for a nation struggling to become a more perfect union. It grew with every suffragette step, every freedom rider's voice, and with every weary soul we welcomed to our shores. And to all the dreamers out there watching tonight, let me be absolutely clear. Ustedes son parte de nuestra historia. Vamos a luchar. Vamos a luchar por ustedes. Y no, nos vamos a alejar. You are part of our story. We will fight for you, and we will not walk away. America, we carry that story on our shoulders. You swarmed Washington last year to ensure that no parent has to worry if they can afford to save their child's life. You proudly marched together last weekend, thousands deep, on the streets of Las Vegas and Philadelphia and Nashville. You sat high atop your mom's shoulders and held a sign that read, build a wall and my generation will tear it down. <laughs> you bravely say, me too. You steadfastly say, black lives matter. You wade through floodwaters, battle hurricanes, brave wildfires and mudslides to save a stranger. You battle your own quiet battles every single day. You drag your weary bodies to that extra shift so that your families won't feel the sting of scarcity. You leave loved ones at home to defend our country overseas, or patrol our neighborhoods at night. You serve, you rescue, you help, 
you heal. That, more than any law or leader, debate or disagreement, that is what drives us towards progress. Bullies may land a punch. They may leave a mark. But they have never, not once, in the history of our United States, managed to match the strength and spirit of a people united in defense of their future. Politicians. <laughs> Politicians can be cheered for the promises they make. Our country will be judged by the promises we keep. That is the measure of our character. That is who we are. Out of many, one. Ladies and gentlemen, have faith. Have faith. The state of our union is hopeful, resilient, and enduring. God bless you. God bless your families. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.